the cyber threat to our energy infrastructure, the largest petroleum pipeline between Texas and New York is out of commission this morning following a cyber attack. Joining me right now is the head of petroleum analysis at Gas Buddy, Patrick DeHaan. Patrick, thanks very much for being here. Your reaction to what's taking place, we still do not know uh, when this pipeline will be back online. Your reaction to its impact? Hey, good morning, Maria. Uh, ouch. Um, you know, this is something that we've seen affect more and more businesses in the last uh, couple of years, uh, even just the last year or two. Um, and this one's particularly painful. Uh, obviously, now a major pipeline that serves uh, millions of motorists in the East Coast uh, is now down, and we have virtually no information on any restoration. Um, obviously, we're going into day four now, this starting late Friday. Uh, we're quickly starting to rub up against kind of the safety net of a few days of gasoline supply um, and, and really uh, not much uh, improvement, uh, not much news. So when will we see the thing, uh, the pipeline return to operation? I think that's really the critical question right now that's yet to be answered. Where are you seeing the highest prices right now across the country? Well, you know, a lot of that's still in the West Coast. Thankfully, we haven't seen much impact yet on price from the Colonial Pipeline outage, but I would expect to see some issues with supply in the days ahead. But, of course, California, opposite coast, price is high because, of course, keep in mind, high taxes and a carbon management program. Jackie, jump in. Jackie, you've co you've covered energy and oil for so long. Give us your take. Well, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, Patrick, this is an isolated incident on the Colonial Pipeline. May not have a huge impact on prices, certainly not long term. But how vulnerable is the grid? Because that's something that we've been talking about for a really long time. All of a sudden, if you have a coordinated attack on a couple of pipelines all at once, you can do a lot more damage. Yeah, exactly that. I, I would think that they really hit it hard here because the Colonial Pipeline really is a major artery, one of the few major arteries through this area. Uh, you look at other areas of the country, in many cases, uh, east of the Rockies, there's a lot of redundancy, a lot of options. Here with the Colonial Pipeline, there's only one real option, and that's either waterborne barges or the plantation pipeline at just a fraction of the size of the Colonial Pipeline. So, uh, if anything, we saw uh, how vulnerable the region is to the Colonial Pipeline outage in 2016. Of course, that's when uh, one of the lines sprung a leak. And then later that year, when uh, a fire erupted in the pipeline, um, you know, we've become kind of accustomed to seeing some issues here. Uh, but the question is, what is going to be done moving forward? A lot of government simulations have been run on cybersecurity attacks on critical infrastructure just like this. Uh, I sat through one in 2018. Uh, but reliving it in the real world is certainly completely different. Yeah, I mean, this attack is being blamed on ransom-seeking dark web criminal enterprises. But Washington is not excluding that a state actor is involved, which is scary. Most companies are increasing their investment in cybersecurity, that's for sure. But does this raise the risk of key infrastructure being targeted going forward as summer is fast approaching, driving set to increase? What kind of a, a spike in gasoline prices would you expect? Well, it, it, it all really contingent on how long this pipeline remains out. I think for most of the country, there's not going to be any real significant pricing impact. I think in the southeast, really, it depends. And we could see an exponential increase starting in the next few days. Right now, Arbob's only up a few cents a gallon. Keep in mind, that's nationally. We could see more localized responses. Prices could jump 10 to 15 cents in the next day or two. And even beyond that, if this pipeline doesn't return to service, um, you know, there, there's a lot of, of uh, quietness on the part of the administration, on the part of Colonial Pipeline, uh, that makes this uh, even potentially more worrisome. Uh, potentially, maybe they don't want to say anything exposing uh, the holes in security right now. Uh, so, you know, we're really waiting yeah. for something, uh, a development, to get any sort of idea on either what happened or how quickly the restoration time will be. There's a lot of parties involved, but again, virtually no news or updates on it. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the scary part. We don't know how long this outage will go and whether or not it will be an extended outage. We'll keep watching, Patrick. Great to get your insights, and we'll check back as we know more. Thanks, Thanks Maria. Thanks so much, Patrick DeHaan, joining us there. All right, we'll see you soon.